At a time when flagship smartphones cost as much as laptops and sometimes even more, we have entry-level smartphones that cost less than $100. A few years ago, $1,000 smartphones made no sense and very few companies dared to venture in that price segment, but now we see a lot of smartphones in that price range. The Samsung Galaxy Note 9, the Huawei Mi 20 Pro, and who can forget the iPhones. And not only flagships, even the mid-range segment has shifted from $200 to $300 category to $300 to $400 category, meaning that people are willing to spend more for a good amount of features. And in reference to this trend, do $100 smartphones really make sense these days? Today, the list of $100 smartphones is pretty thin. You get phones like the Honor 7A and Redmi 6A, and if you have used these phones, you know that their performance is just usable. Over time, they tend to slow down and they cannot run many apps smoothly. To solve this very problem, Google had introduced Android Go a while back. This lightware software enabled phones with modest specs to run good enough. It consumes less space, has improved Android OS, and gives you a usable version of Google Apps like YouTube Go, Gmail Go, etc. But there are limitations that came along. You don't get the full features of all the apps on Android Go, and even on the phones that do not have Android Go, heavy apps do not run very smoothly. So needless to say, $100 phones are starting to make less sense, aren't they? I am not saying that budget phones are not worth it. For someone who does not want to spend a lot on phones, it is okay, it is alright to go and buy one if your needs are not very comprehensive. But then again, the best thing about $100 smartphones is that they cost $100 and nothing more. Hear me out, I am going to take the example of the latest two phones from Xiaomi itself. There's the recent Redmi Note 7 that is creating a lot of buzz and there's the new Redmi Go. The Note 7 costs about $150, whereas the Redmi Go costs some $90. And what do you get for the price? Looking at the specs, you're getting two times or even three times better features if you add $60 more. For a $60 difference, what you get on the Redmi Note 7 is a tall FHD display, a powerful Snapdragon 660 processor, a big 4000 mAh battery with fast charging, awesome cameras, a premium design opposed to low-res display and entry-level processor, very average cameras, and a plastic body. I am not saying that the $90 Redmi Go is not a value for money, but by adding just $60 more, you get so much more. You get an awesome device that will run for two years and more. Over time, the Redmi Go storage won't be enough and you will end up replacing it or storing it. And in the meantime, the Redmi Note 7 will still be performing good with regular security updates and the latest OS. Plus, you will get a good resale value for the Redmi Note 7 even later. Right now in 2019, the sweet spot for smartphone companies is between $150 to $200 and this is where smartphone companies are fighting to give the best specs possible. They usually do that by cutting the distributors and going online. And even Samsung has done this with the M-series that is priced between $100 to $200. Sadly, manufacturers are not focusing that much on entry-level phones. If you are living outside India, chances are that you can only buy entry-level phones from local manufacturers. In Nepal, it's Colors, in Philippines, it's Cherry, and honestly, that is not good enough. Similarly, manufacturers like Huawei, Oppo, Vivo have started focusing less on the $100 category. Why? Because there is less profit in it and possibly because people are willing to spend more nowadays. So rather than making a smartphone that costs $100, they are better focusing on mid-range and budget devices. So the $100 price category is starting to make less sense even to manufacturers. Lastly, I would like to clarify that I am not trying to bash $100 smartphones here. They are okay for someone wanting to run only basic operations on their phone, but what I'm trying to say is, in the long run, be it in terms of usability or resale value, they don't stand in a good position like slightly expensive budget phones do. So if you're thinking of getting a smartphone worth $100 or less, advisable is you add a few bucks and get yourself a phone that will yield you more benefits in the future. Again, Google has Android Go projects that may seem like a solution, but in the long run, it won't really be a solution. So that is all for the video. Tell us if you agree with me or if you disagree in the comment section below. That's all for now. Thank you for watching and do subscribe to our channel.